Hey y'all, it's Christy Cook from Tea Dottles. Um, it is time for episode number 48, I believe, <laughs> of Tea Dottles Talks. Sorry this is late. My internet has been on the fritz. Yeah, yeah. So, first let's say welcome subscribers and welcome back. Welcome new subscribers and welcome back subscribers. I'm happy to have you here in my maker shenanigans. I like to do the uh, fabric things or the sewing things, uh, the yarny things and the DIY things. Uh, so I do consider this a maker channel. If you like to make things, you might like it here. So welcome. Mm -hmm. I feel like this needs to go this way just a touch. You can see more of the yarn shelf. There's a little bit of yarn missing. I added another skein today because I was adding in new yarn. <laughs> <laughs> that hadn't been put into my Excel sheet that I have. We'll talk about that in Yarny Goodness. But, um, oh yeah, I got a little coffee left. It is cold because I filmed one video and I intended to film videos back to back because I have a lot to do today. My internet has been out. Well, it was out last Thursday and Friday. They supposedly had it fixed. Uh, Friday evening through Saturday, maybe a little bit of Sunday morning it worked. Sunday evening it stopped working again. Yeah. I had to call them this morning because Monday was a holiday. And I don't know what, it's something in the area because it was something area wide before. And it, it's like it'll say there's internet. Mm hmm. Fools you. You click on something, you can open up the first window click on something and it spins and it touch there's no internet it's like so anyway it's currently working i hope that it stays that way because it's quite annoying i start the first day of summer semester tomorrow i don't need my internet being crazy okay i haven't been able to answer much emails from the school because i'm just using my phone i do have an app so i can see the notifications but sometimes there's some things you just can't I don't like working on my phone like it's a computer. It doesn't work for me at all. I have, uh, I gotta be on my computer. I'm one of those that has multiple windows open at one time when I'm doing things. So I need that, that room, I guess, on my screen. So yeah, that's what's been going on. So if you feel like you've missed me or I haven't, or so I tried to respond to some things earlier and I did a little bit on my phone, but it's really hard to do all that my phone. I don't like it. I told y'all I'm a poker on my phone when I type. I can't I can't do this. I have really long thumbs. Seems like I should be able to do that, but I can't it's just not I can't do it. My son makes fun of me all the time for it, but I don't care. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I did a yarn a fabric slash yarn haul video just a moment ago, which you will see this week. I'm hoping to get this up before the day's over. <laughs> and I'm hoping to get a blog post up that's supposed to go out last Thursday. Still hasn't been put up because every time I try to work on it, the internet's out. Anywho. I have lots to show y'all today. Regardless of me showing your, you my new yarn and fabric, which I had to put in a separate video because there was so much of it and there's more coming. Mm, yeah. So, I have some great finishes to show y'all. I'm excited. I did get a lot done in my whip of the weeks for each category, except for one, my DIY one. I didn't get to work on that at all. But this week, I'm going to be a little more lenient on myself about that because I have a shop update I'm working on. So, that takes up a good bit of time. Um, plus, I, it's the first week of summer semester. Plus, I have a doctor's visit tomorrow morning. <laughs> in the neighboring town which requires blood work and an ultrasound and everything so yeah I'm not gonna be so hard I wasn't hard on myself last week I should have been harder actually because I wound up finishing a lot of this stuff up at the last minute since and since I didn't get to do anything online Monday some of it got finished that day so you know it is what it is um so, last week I set whips of the week in my Yarny Goodness Fabric Obsessed and DIY sections. 
I didn't set one in my life and admin updates, which I feel that I should. Because I am a work in progress after all, aren't we all? <laughs> um, so, for this week, I'd really like, as far as businessy kind of things, I would like to update my affiliate page on my blog. It's the only thing I'm going to put down for this week. Like I said, got lots of other things going on. Um, and personally, I would like to, what did I say? I had something in my brain and I forgot what it was. Uh, you know, I need to, well, I really need to lose some weight, okay? That's really hard to do when you don't have a thyroid. If you have thyroid issues, you know what I'm talking about, okay? Unless you have hyperthyroidism, then you can't keep weight on. <laughs> I have that problem. I haven't gained any weight through this pandemic thing. But I really need to lose some weight. And it's... Most of my weight is down here. <laughs> if you're looking at me up here, you might think, you don't look like you need to lose weight. You may think, no, you may not. I don't know. But down here, there's a big... That's where everything falls, is in my helps and thighs. <laughs> Anywho, plus it's just, it's uncomfortable. It's not, it's not even really, my, my clothes are not fitting great when I, I'll talk about it in my fabric obsessed, some clothes I worked on, but my butt is too big. But, um, which my husband told me, Aren't you in control of that? When I was talking about something not ever fitting right. <laughs> if I'm making my own clothes. I am in control of that. <laughs> I'll talk more about that in Fabric Obsessed. But it, anyway, I just, it's like, oh, I just really need to lose some weight. Tighten some things up a little bit, maybe. I'm not getting any younger, you know. Things are flopping everywhere. <laughs> so I can't really do huge amounts of cardio because... Any exercise I do takes away energy from my day, okay? Yoga and walking are about the extent. I could do some weight-bearing exercises, but super cardio, like I used to do the, like I used to really like the dance videos, like the cardio you did with you did dancing or whatever. What was that one? Zumba? Yeah, that's what I used to do with my mom. I just can't anymore. I... It exhausts me, and I can't do anything for the rest of the day if I do that. And it could possibly last until the next day. It's not like when I had a thyroid and I could exercise and I felt rejuvenated and be like, after I, you know, rested, it might be a little sore. You feel this energy. I don't know. I just want to take a nap. <laughs> and I don't want to get back up. So, I have to be careful with that. And I think I need to really work on my food intake. I don't, uh, I think I've been eating too much, hmm, not enough vegetables and stuff in there. I don't, I don't dislike vegetables. I don't know what the deal is. I think it's more about preparing them because I don't have the time to deal with it. So I think that's what I set for my personal goal this week is to make a plan for that. Maybe start putting it into action, but just kind of make a plan for that, okay? So, hold on. I'm going to pause for just a second. Okay, I just want to shut that door because my washing machines are going, and it's probably going to pick that up, so it might be a little quieter now. <laughs> so, okay. So, for our whip of the week for personal goals, I just realized what I had said originally that I was going to do. I need to do that too, though is to make a plan for my eating and exercise habits and get into make them habits, right? I'm not going to go on a diet. Those don't work for me. I mean, I just need to make my diet better, my normal eating habits better. Um, telling myself I can't have something just backfires on me every time. Like I said before, I don't like anyone telling me what to do, especially not myself telling me what to do. <laughs> So I'm going to work on that and I'm going to get my advent, uh, advent calendar, what am I saying? My affiliate link page on my blog fixed, okay? Get it updated. That'll be something I can do. Um, 
and then I also what I I remember what I had said it was gonna my personal whip was gonna be just kind of personal business related I have an agenda I write things in it sometimes I miss a whole month writing things in it but I never look at it again after I set it up for the month I need to make time in the morning to take that out look it over see what I got to do for the week to better plan my day so so that's something else I'm gonna do I know that that seems like a lot but it's not really that much stuff it's just getting my planning right yeah I think that'll be good so what else has happened this week besides the stupid internet not working I don't know I have a fly problem in my house they keep getting in my house I think they're finally all gone they may just be hiding in a corner because it's a little bit cooler today because it's been raining off and on all day. Yay. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't know. I might think of it in the middle of stuff I could do. So I tried to trim my bang. I trimmed on the first time and I realized that this side was like hanging away now. It looks, and I tried to even that up. I don't, I don't know. I need, I need a haircut, y'all. I seriously need a haircut. I need it thinned. I'm kind of digging the length and the way it's kind of it does that. It does that when I wash it and just let it air dry. That's what it does. I put some leave on conditioner, spraying conditioner stuff in it to keep it from being frizzy. And that's all I do. It just needs to be thinned. There's just too much of it hanging there. So, I don't know. <sighs> I don't even know if my hairdresser is doing anything. She's has a personal business so she does it I guess adjacent to her house so I don't think she doesn't like have like a ton of folks in there at one time but I don't know I have to message her and say I don't know I don't know uh, so uh yeah oh and also I was going to talk about this um I, I've gotten all these teas from different clubs and just swaps and all this stuff so I've been mixing teas. <laughs> like, here in the South, we like cold iced tea. And I haven't had any, made any for the fridge in a long time. It's a staple in a lot of people's homes in the South. Uh, we stopped drinking it a long time ago just because it was getting too much sugar in it, you know. But you can control the sugar you put in it. Hello. So I've been making me what, I think I talked about this as a tea starter. It's in a half and a quart size mason jar I will boil some tea bags and I'll put I think I just put half a cup of sugar and then I pour it on top and I shake it up or stir it up and then I seal it and keep it in the fridge and then when I want some tea I pour a little bit of that in my glass and then I fill the rest with water and it's delicious so last week I made some I left that tea bag in there I'm not going to get it it was some kind of cinnamon Tazo, T-A-Z-O, tea bag, and I mixed it with a caramel, some kind of caramel from Bigelow tea bag, and it was delicious. So this week, I was making a new one, and I have four different ones, because I had two of the Tazo. So I, these are the, the four that I put together <laughs> for this week's tea. I'm trying to stop drinking so much coffee in the afternoons, it, it's keeping me awake at night so this is a Yorkshire tea um, this is just a have let's have a proper brew that was terrible um, I think this is just a black tea yeah this is just black tea um, and this one is frosty afternoon salon black tea packed in Sri Lanka um, yeah, this has got that Ceylon, Ceylon black tea and natural flavors from passion fruit and orange. It smelled really good. And then I put this Christmas Eve tea from Stash in there. Now this one has cinnamon, orange peel, spearmint, vanilla extract, orange oil, cinnamon flavor, and clove flavor. And then I put this orange and cinnamon spice from Twinnings in there. Twinnings. Twinnings. Sorry. So I got an orangey, cinnamony kind of 
going on with the black tea. It smelled really good. I haven't tried it yet. It's still cooling on the table in there. I just made it. So, hmm, I'll have some this afternoon. You know, it's already afternoon. And I'm still drinking all this cup of coffee. I probably don't need to drink any more of this. I'm going to put this aside. I'm going to grab my water bottle. That's what I'm going to do. Before we do that, I remembered something else. <laughs> I was going to talk about the Maker Advent Calendar. It went out for sale Saturday. Again, I had internet troubles. Could not get it up. So I did my video, which I'll try to put an eye link up here to that. Um, so if you want to know more about it, um, go check that out. Um, there's still spots left. Um, did not sell out like my Maker Bag Club does, but I didn't expect it to. But um, yeah, it's still available. I will keep those up for sale. I gotta have a cutoff point. I gotta think about that for a minute. I know they'll be for sale for at least through the end of June, possibly July. So, um, yeah, if you haven't, go check out that video. And if it sounds like something you'd like to do, go check it out, okay? I wanted to say that before I forgot. And there's a shop update coming this weekend. And I will show you some things I have sewn already. It's not a huge amount of stuff. Right, where'd that other thing go? Anyway, in my fabric obsessed. Okay, now let's move on to the other, the, the next thing. Okay, it is time for yarny goodness. And so excited to show y'all my finished object. Y'all, if y'all follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you've already seen this. I posted it late last night. I finished sewing it up late last night. I finished my sweater. Look at it. My knitted sweater. Oh, yeah. Look at it. There's a string on it. That's because it's been laying around in here. So I can show it on my guess. I haven't washed this or blocked I did not block it before I sewed it together because it's an oversized sweater and it's made of acrylic yarn. I used this acrylic yarn. So it's not. I just didn't need to do that. So I'm probably going to toss it into the washer and see how it fares. Of course, I'm a little scared to do that because I don't want to mess it up. It's already got, but this is from me. See these little pieces? This is where I split the yarn when I was knitting. So that is totally me and my new be knitting, be knitting, beginning. Because you can see that I messed up. I have a row of pearls halfway across the top of the ribbing here. And there's some little bump, pearl bumps where they're not supposed to be. So, but overall, I think it turned out awesome. I was so excited to finish this. I was dancing around in the living room, talking to my husband about it, and he just was like, oh yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> so, we used a mattress stitch to um, seam this up, and I don't think I've ever really used a mattress stitch, but I loved using it. It was so fun to do. Um, look at my seams. And you can even, this side, I think you can tell a little more. But you can't really tell. Wait, I think that, I think that's the seam right there. Yeah. Can't even hardly see it in the side. Now, under the armpit you can, but that's, I guess things got wider. You can see that, but. When it gets closer up here, you can't. But that's because of the way the it was angled um and then it had a seam. the arm seams now this took me a minute they turned out all right um now i am familiar with oh looks like i might need to put another thread in there a little hole in the pit <laughs> let me get back over that let's check this one Yeah, I think I need to go back over the pits. But, um, so I stitched halfway up one and realized it was way off because I was trying to line up with my markers that we were supposed to leave for the sleeve. Um, and I was like, this is way off. So, um, uh, I had to pull that back out, which was fun. Yeah. And then on the other side, I was like, okay, I'm going to pin it. I put all those little eye, those light bulb stitch marker thingies. 
and then I looked up and I was doing it. I was talking on the phone to my son while I was doing it, and I realized it was moving. Because those things don't, don't stay in place. They have a lot of play in them. So I take out that as well. I finally just used the little wonder clips. These little, these little dudes right here. Yeah, because it would hold it in place and I could, it kept me from, you know, stretching things or whatever I was doing. And that worked out much better. Plus I just lined up the center of the sleeve with the, the seam at the top. I was a little bit shy of where my stitch markers were, but it was okay. At least my sleeve was centered. <laughs> and then I, because I sewed on, I sewed the shoulder seams, which I, when I first put this on, I was like, oh my God, I didn't leave enough room because I didn't think it was going to go over my head. But it does. I don't like, it's, it lands right here, which my scar is right there. So I feel it. I feel like I feel it more than I probably would if I didn't have a scar there. But, <laughs> um, Overall, I like it. It fits. It's comfortable. And you can, you see this little rippling going on in here? That's because of my tension. That's all that is. My tension as I was knitting. But this is my first sweater and I think it's awesome. <laughs> Super excited to have that done. I needed to put a label on it. Like I said, I'm going to wash it because it's supposed to be machine washable. It's, um acrylic I don't know if I'll put it in the dryer it's not gonna shrink because it's acrylic so I don't know. I'll tell you how that goes but I have I haven't weighed it yet but I have quite a bit of that yarn left uh, yeah so this is probably two three-quarter skeins of this I used I'll take one of these out the Huga Charm in Fireball. That's what this is. So it has a little fuzz going on in that little bit of Stellina or whatever that is in it. Um, yeah, this is acrylic and other fibers, which is the shiny stuff. That's the other fiber. So, uh, yeah, it's very soft. Looking forward to wearing it when it gets cold. Hopefully we have a real winter this, this time. <laughs> So, that is a huge F.O. for me. I was so excited to get that done. And, and yeah, I will knit another sweater. But, I want to knit one that is top down, all one piece. Um, I know they have them like that. Uh, I don't, then I won't have to do all the pieces. Which, I sew, so I sew together pieces, but it's different. When you have to make the piece first and then sew it together. <laughs> and this you sew together by hand. You wouldn't sew it with a machine. I mean, you probably could, but I wouldn't do that if I knitted a whole sweater. Why am I trying to stick that in there? I don't know. So, that was my whip of the week, which technically I didn't finish till yesterday. But I did finish it. Yay. Where can I set this so it'll be out of my way? Is that right there? There we go. Now, I also got my nose on my bunny, which I did that, like, right after that podcast. So, he's been done. I just put some little gray embroidery thread on it. I think he looks super cute. And then I did weave in the tails on my scarf, which this will go in my giveaway bag because these are not my colors at all. We do pale for me. So... I did get that done. Um, get this on out the way. Now, I'm gonna figure out what bag everything's in. So, where did I put? Oh, why is it way over here? I don't know. So, I did not finish my capelet. Which I said I may or may not. But I'm getting close. I think I have five rows left on it. So it doesn't look much different than before because <laughs> but those rows keep getting so much longer. And I thought I would have a bunch of yarn left over, but I don't know that I'm gonna make it to the end of the pattern. 
because this is how much yarn I got left. Like I said, it's five more rows. What I, where's my, my marker is actually on not quite the midpoint. You can see it dangling right there. So I'm just going to do it until I run out of yarn because I don't think this is going to make it all of the rows <laughs> that I have. So that's what I'll do. I'll just work on it until it runs out of yarn. Hopefully I'll get at least one more row out of it. So that should be shortly finished. I'll work on that during the evenings and get it done. So as far as whip of the week for, like I said, I'm going to be easy on myself this week because I have um, so much other stuff going on. So it's going to be just kind of finishing up things like that. Like I want to finish that because I don't have much left. I would like to finish my lit Carol, my Lost in Time shawl. Don't take that out. There's no stitch. I, need to, I seriously need a bit of stitch. Y'all, you know, I have so many stitch markers and half the time, what's going on in my bag? My hook's just stuck in the loop. That's the back side. So, I haven't done anything else on this since the last time I showed y'all, but I'd like to finish this. Of course, I think that that cowl goes on through the end of next month. I don't know. I have to check on that. So, Got a good bit left in this cake, so I don't. I'll work on it, but I don't know that I'll finish that. So, I like to alternate things, and so that will be something I'm working on this week. I also, I've made two hats with this. Um, I think I can get another one out of it, so I want to do another one. That's for the the hats I'm making for. Uh, the Cancer Center at Phoebe and the neighboring town, Albany. That's where my mother went for treatment. So, this is the Loops and Thread Colors. I don't think they have that anymore because I didn't see it on the website. So, But, this was a big ball of yarn. It had 507 yards on it. 507.44 yards is what it says. That's a little crazy, but okay. I think I, I've gotten two hats. I think I can get a third one out of it. So I'm going to work on that. I'm trying different hat patterns with that. Buzz. Too much yarn going around. Hmm. Okay. I think I got it all. <laughs> I wonder how much. I wonder about that sometimes. How much yarn fuzz and fabric fiber have I ingested <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to work on that I also want to do another rectangle when I was doing the rectangles to donate to Warm Up America got stuck on that bullion stitch one and I never picked it back up but I just need to do one and get it over with they're not that hard to do so in here I have my I would like to put some work in on this I'm not going to say I'll finish it like I said, got lots going on, but this is something I want to work on. This is my summer top. This is the Spotting Clouds top. Um, I have the whole top. I've started on the part that just goes down. I'm just a little ner nervous about that. I think it's going to be too tight on me down here because I'm so much bigger on the bottom than I am on the top. It's just ridiculous. So, so those are whips of the week. They're just the things I want to finish, like the hat, the finish that a little bit on there, and uh, oh, my little fox. I want to finish him. I hadn't finished him yet. My little fox from Dog Good Yarn. I didn't bring him over here. I hadn't done anything else on him. I just got to make his tail. I did. I made his belly, but I hadn't put it on yet. So I got to make his tail, put his belly and ears on, attach his tail, and then I'll be done with him. So, yeah. Now. I just couldn't stand it. I had to, you remember the yarn I showed you from Dawn Good Yarn last week? It's some out of this because I'm trying to empty this out with little projects because they're kind of one skein things going on in here. Um, I said I was going to combine it because it was lace weight. It was like a green, uh, orange yellow, and a purple ombre lace weight yarns. And I had some plain colors that I was going to blend it with. 
and make something with it. So I started on that because I just couldn't stand it anymore because you know how that goes. Mm. I wound up the skeins. Look how, oh, it made this beautiful marled because the purple is ombre too. So this is with the gray, it's like a gray lace weight and the purple ombre lace weight darn good yarns. And I started, look, there we go again, no stitch marker in here. I started this little corner to corner. Oh, it's gonna be a scarf, right? I've already started up this side. I left some spaces. And then when I get closer, my plan is to, I'll probably write a pattern for this. Um, it's nothing too complicated, so I don't know. But um, it's corner to corner and I left the spaces out, which I have done before. I love corner to corner. I just love the way this looks. Y'all look at it, it's so pretty. So this is the purple, which I've already started. And I'll probably leave out some spaces when I get to the next color and then the next color, which is my plan. It's gonna be a really long scarf. Um, so this is the orange yellow, which I blended with the beaded, uh, uh, not, uh, whiter Donger yarn, which it's a little bit, it's a fingering weight more so. So that's how that looks. Look at it, it's so pretty. This is not focusing. What is it? It'll do it sometimes and then it don't. Oh yeah, look at there. So that is, that and then I have the green one which I did with just a off-white sort of finger and weight look at that marled effect that gives this is so cool looking I love the way this looks um so then I had this much left over in the orange because that other that beaded stuff was not um, the same weight, so it wasn't as long. And then I mixed my leftover bits from the gray and the white with the rest of the orange. So, what I'm thinking, I'm going to do all the purple, and then I may put in like a bit of this, because it has the gray like that. And then I may start... I don't know if I'm gonna start the orange next or the. Sorry, let me put my finger in your face. I'm trying to get this thing to focus. Okay, so I'm probably gonna mix these little bits in, is what I mean, in between things. So we'll see how it looks when I cast it on. But very excited about that. I hope to get to work on this this week, but I'm not gonna put it as a priority because I kind of worked on it last week when I should have been working on other stuff that I was supposed to be working on. I just needed to know what it looked like because I had it in my brain. Y'all know how that feels? Y'all know how that feels. So, that's what I'll be working on this week. I'm going to be working on... Oh, I'm shaking stuff everywhere. I'm going to be working on finishing up my capelet. My fox. Getting another hat and square out. Sounds like a lot, but they're just small little things. I should be able to work on those... In between, I do have a doctor's appointment tomorrow, which is going to take forever, but I'm not taking any knit or crochet in there. I don't want things getting on it. So, I'm just going to read a book on my phone, which is stinky, but I really don't want to take my fiber things in the doctor's office currently. So, um, yeah. Oh, I have... I did a whole video with a fabric and yarn haul. But I saved this one for for my podcast because it's my latest uh, quotable Dumbledore club from Lolo Did It. Um, I'm going to read the quote first before I show you the yarn. Um, ah, Birdie Bot's Every Flavor Beans. I was most unfortunate in my youth to come across a vomit flavored one. And since then, I'm afraid I've rather lost my liking for them. But I think I'll be safe with a nice toffee. Alas, earwax. So, <laughs> what do you think this color is called? It's very pretty, actually. But it's called earwax. <laughs> so, 
but it has this lovely tonal quality to it that I love but just thinking about it being earwax it's weird so this is the latest installment in this one this is skein number six um, because we got one in December when we signed up for this and we're supposed to get some bonus thing at the end of this year as long as we stay in the club the whole year which I plan on doing because this is tweed and I love tweeded yarn so that is this month's Lolo did it um, I did notice the bag's a little wider than usual not that it matters I keep them in there I just updated my Excel chart yesterday evening and this morning I worked on it so while I was still waiting for the internet to come back on um, to add in new yarn I even went ahead and added in some yarn I ordered I hadn't added all that in yet but I've realized that there's some things that I'm pretty sure I gave away that I've got to check on they're on that list still but currently because you know at the beginning of this year my whole goal because I'm doing stash down on the blog I'm doing the happy scrappy yarn challenge on Christy with Chris crochet creation by Christy that's still going on so it's jewelry oh that's what I was going to show y'all I'll show y'all that in just a second let me finish this train of thought first um this month is jewelry so you have till the end of the month which is Sunday to put your entries in for that um that's the happy scrappy yarn challenge and so there's some things I've got to adjust in there my the weight for my sweater is still in there the weight for an afghan I finished is in there that that one that is still lingering in there that was supposed to go to somebody for donation I gotta figure out who I said I was gonna send that to I think I know but I'm not completely sure she's been sitting in there waiting oh along with the traveling corner to corner blanket that I still have I'm so sorry about that Austin it's sitting in a box I just it won't fit in my mailbox and I have to go by the post office and I've been avoiding the post office so I need to ship that out this week so I will do that um oh yeah there's something fun coming up at the end of this video so y'all better stay tuned you better you might want to just saying I almost forgot about that um so anyway there's some adjustments that's got to be made either way there's still over 200 30 something thousand yards of yarn in my stash it's ridiculous I actually just updated my total yarn yardage from southern skeins I was just wondering how much I actually have because I have a whole bin of it over there I have like 12,000 yards of yarn from just southern skeins it's crazy but it does not rival my lion brand yarn stash that is my biggest brand of yarn that I have the most yarn for um so yeah plus I've been getting into the paint box yarns recently and the premier yarns and the hobby lobby yarns uh, so I need to get back on track with that let's just say okay my dog started barking it scared the mess out of me I'm gonna cut that out because it's probably will scare y'all too uh, anywho, don't start again. <laughs> I don't even know what he's barking at. I think he hears the washing machine in there making noise. Um, anyway, what was I saying about my stash? Okay, so I need to get back on track with lowering that, that yarn total because that was my goal at the beginning of the year. June is halfway point of the year. So, you know, I think everybody kind of got thrown off with their goals because of what's happening in the world today. So, I think we'll, uh, I'll, I'll give myself a pass on that. But I need to get back on track with that. Which is one reason I started trying to empty out this. So, I have two projects so far. I'm almost finished with the capelet, which will take away a skein here. And then, I, I, that was several skeins, actually. And this is going to be in that scarf that I'm doing. So, I want to get back on track with that and see if we can't lower that number. So right now I'm going to put the total yardage. I go by yardage, not weight. Um, I think maybe it's because I t 
teach drafting and did drafting for so long. It just makes more sense to me. Um, so 232,000 yards. I'm going to put that up here so you see that number. It's a big number. I know it's not as big as some people's stashes, but it's a lot. So um, we're going to see if I can get that knocked down a bit before next week, which I feel like I can because i got to take out some stuff that hadn't been taken out anyway. So it's going to go down. There were bigger projects. That sweater was like 1,700 yards of yarn, but I've got to weigh what I have left. So I have to count that. So, um, yeah, I think that's it. Oh, and I was going to show you, this is hopefully going up today, maybe Wednesday now. But I said I was going to do a pattern for the Happy Scrappy Yarn Challenge this month because I said I was going to do it the last month. That was my month. And it never happened. But I did make one. And I have a blog post in the works. I got to finish editing pictures. But I did these little... I'm just going to show you one. These little crocheted earrings. Super simple. It's actually corner to corner with a space in the middle. And then I just put this little dangly shell in front of it, which you don't have to do. And then I got an ear wire on it. Yeah, fun. So that is coming up. This is really simple, y'all. Wanted to keep it super simple. You can make a bunch of these. I think they're super cute. And they look very summery to me. Um, you could change up whatever you hang in the little center part or you can not put something there. Uh, so that pattern is coming. It will be on the blog. Um, I made that with that. It's over there, but I don't want to go grab it. But we we'll be talking about that uh, steel wool or whatever it's called from Line Brand. It's got. It's actually got some steel mixed in with the wool, so it's kind of interesting. I was going to just crochet with it originally, but I did not like the way that felt. <laughs> so I mixed it with a one of the little croquettes from Red Heart. So that'll all be in the blog that I posted, though. So that that is coming up. I'm sorry it's so late, because every time I tried to do it, it seemed like May just got away from me for number one. Number two, my internet wouldn't cooperate. All right. Hmm. I think that's it for y'all to get this. Okay. Okay. It is time for Fabric Obsessed. I'm not going to show you any new fabrics because I showed them all in my yarn and fabric haul video, which will come up sometime this week. i got to get all these videos edited and shown up. But let's see. My whips of the week were to finish some shirts I had lingering around that were already cut out. And catch up on my cotton cuts mystery quilt okay so I did make great progress on shirts okay this shirt I'm wearing is one that I made it was a t-shirt I had cut out I put this collar on it I thought I would like it standing like that but I kind of wish I had made it lay down now but I still like it it's very comfortable I'm gonna stand up because it has this interesting little detail down the side. Yep. I put this little piece of contrast, which is the same as the collar. This is a blank slate. Not blank slate. Is that right? Yes. I think that's the brand name of the pattern. Blank slate. Melly, Slo Melly Sews t-shirt pattern. And it, the sleeves are made on to the shirt. So you don't have a seam there. It's two pieces super easy to make the reason that i have this little bit here is because somehow when i cut this out i had a little notch in my fabric um y'all i'm gonna grab my fabric swatch box right quick okay i wanted to grab that because then i can tell you what this is made out of these shirts are super comfortable. I have several, made several of them now. Uh, my monkey shirt, the one I showed y'all before with the kind of seabirds and ocean-y kind of feel to it. And I made one for my mother. Made this one and two more I'm going to show you. <laughs> so, 
this is, uh, I put that little piece in there because like I said, it, there was some notch, something weird going on at the edge that I didn't notice when I cut it out. So I just decided I'm going to fix it. So let's see, here we go. I found it right off the bat. I can't believe it. This is a wool bamboo lycra jersey knit. Okay. I, this does say dry clean, which that's probably because of the wool in it. So this is what I was talking about earlier when I was talking about fabrics. Well, I wasn't talking about it earlier in this video. In my whole video, I talked about it a little bit. If you are, I have never thought of wool as a fiber to wear in the summer because I thought it would be too hot. Well, um, it does have absorbent properties and things kind of like cotton does. And I think it has antibacterial properties. I'm not sure about that part, but it is actually really comfortable and it's airy feeling. It is not hot at all, but I feel like in the winter, if I layer it with something, it'll be warm still. So this blend with this bamboo, like our jersey knit, it's very comfortable. You know, I can feel the wool when I touch it, but it's not itchy at all. It is very airy and loose and light. Uh, natural fibers are better if you get hot really easily, especially if you're experiencing hot flashes. I told my mother this because she always buys the, and I said that in my fabric haul video too, but I'll say it again here. If you buy the super flowy uh, shirts and stuff, summer tops, if they're made of polyester, they're just not breathable. That's all there is to it. That fabric's not breathable. So if you're combusting from the inside and you're hot, it's gonna hold that in and it's gonna make it's gonna feel hot still right so you need something more breathable look for something with a uh, rayon in it rayon's actually a breathable fabric a rayon jersey blend is really nice or like this bamboo wool one is actually really nice so very cool it even sometimes some cotton like if you get a thicker cotton t-shirt it can feel like it's sticking to you or something this is very airy and nice I love it. So, um, that is what, this is how I keep, so I keep intending to put this in a book, but it's working pretty good here. I just stick those stickers or if I don't get stickers, I'll write it on there and a little fabric sample. So I can remember what the fabric's made out of. All my fabric comes from fabric art. So let's just see if I can find, yes. Okay. So I have this other one. I'll show you in a minute. Now this one is, is, I thought this had wool in it, but it is not. So this is a heathered charcoal gray rayon spandex jersey knit. Um, that's this one here. This one, I wore this all day yesterday. It needs to go to wash, but I had to show it to y'all. So this is same pattern. Just, I got everything finished. Super comfortable. Okay, this has the rayon in it, which is what, and it's, it's got spandex. This one actually made good leggings if I had enough to do that. But it's, yeah, that's, that spandex is snappy. Spandex is snappy. So, um, this one was super comfortable too. I could have swore this one had wool in it, but it doesn't. But this was, for a black t-shirt, me outside walking the dogs, it was very comfortable. Um, yeah. So, I finished that one. And then I also finished, now this one. Oh, I bet I'm not going to be able to find it as easily. See, this is the fabric I made one of the other ones out of. Y'all probably see me wear. I need to keep that card because it has my other stuff in it. My monkey fabric. Um, where? Oh, I need to keep this out too. For the other top. Y'all. This is why I want it in a book because I can divided up by types of fabric, right? I should have pulled these out before I started talking to y'all, but I didn't. I don't know. This is probably a poly lycra or jersey knit. It may be a rayon knit. The one I'm going to show you. Is that it? That's it right there. Oh yeah, yeah. Actually, this is 100% rayon. How old does it have? It has stretch in it. Hmm. Is that the right thing? 
Okay. Yes, it is. That matches it right there. So this is 100% rayon. So it's going to be nice and cool too. But this is my other one. And I had these cut out and sewn. I just needed to do the the hems. The hem and the, the sleeve and top turnover. So that is my third one. Okay. So I got all three of those. What I'm wearing, which I did a little different. And I got this one and this one. I got all my t-shirts I finished. Which, that is my favorite t-shirt to make. Because it fits so well. And it's two pieces. <laughs> so got that one done um now this is made with 100% cotton chambray but I put like 100% cotton leftover in the top for the yoke okay so this is I should have brought my mannequin over here that's what I should have done but see this is how this goes can see I did all my top stitching with pink. It's really nice. This is supposed to have buttons up it. This was um where did that pattern go? I thought I had it. There it is. Right. This is this one. Okay. This one that I didn't do the poof. I just left the regular sleeve, the under sleeve. I forgot pockets. I didn't have pockets cut out. So it doesn't matter because it doesn't fit. Okay. I left it open. I thought, well, since it, it's so long, it wouldn't, if I had to put the buttons on it, it would have been too tight across my behind. So, um, I thought, well, I could use it like a smock. I could go ahead and add the pockets, use it like a smock. Well, the sleeves are way too tight on my arm. They're like putting a dent in my arm. I almost didn't get it back off. <laughs> like, why? Why the sleeve so small? <laughs> so I have an issue with that in shirts, okay? I tend to have to buy like an extra large. If it's a long shirt, sometimes I'll buy a 2X because it's going to go over my butt and then I'll take in the top, okay? We'll have a lot going on up here. But I have broad shoulder, shoulder, shoulders. And then apparently. Now, this is the other reason for me doing some exercise in this right here. And when you ride on the board, <laughs> that's not attractive. <laughs> anyway, I have trouble, even before it got that, that floppity, we're going to say, I've always had trouble with women's shirts, even if I buy a shirt size appropriate to me, fitting in the arm area. I guess I just have chunky arms. I think I remember a nurse saying that to me once because she was taking my blood and she's like, oh, you got those chunky arms. I said, yes, I do. <laughs> she wasn't being rude. She was, she, cause she was saying she does too. But, uh, so I didn't even think to measure the width of it because, but I should, especially if I'm not using elastic. See, this is fine right here elastic just a knit if I'm not using a knit um so I can't wear this <laughs> I'm very irritated I'm probably gonna see if someone else wants it like my family members um this is just a smock I didn't put the buttons at the front it's very lightweight chambray and I was going to put pockets on it. I was like, oh, I can toss it over a tank top or something while I'm doing stuff around the house. And I can keep my phone in my pocket. No, because I can't wear those sleeves. There are things I could do to alter the sleeves. And maybe I will. But I was very irritated with the shirt. So, that was kind of a fail. Not totally, but... Now, the other shirt that I said I was going to try to finish. Now, this is 100% polyester fabric, but, you know, I liked it. So, <laughs> this is the top. This is the Everyday Elegance PDF Sewing Pattern by Pirates. Patterns for Pirates is what it's, that P4P stands for. So, this one fits. Um, 
I've got two hem up the sleeve still. I gotta finish this middle portion, okay? Y'all, this shirt was just trying to get on my nerves. So, I, I've put this kind of hem tape at the top, but this little V in the front, I gotta figure out. It really hangs down too far, and I had an idea what I wanna do, and it just didn't work. So, I had made, it has a collar piece, okay? close this so it can stop flopping in front of me. I had this collar piece and I had taken this uh, one of my silk fat quarters from Darn Good Yarn and fussy cut it so that I could have this laying across my collar. Which I thought looked really neat. You know. Um, the collar stopped like two inches from it was sitting way back here. It looked so, so stupid. I was like, why? Why is this made this way? I don't think that's the way it's made. I had this printed out, but I think I lost the PDF copy when my computer crashed, and it's one that I didn't get the copy back for. Sometimes you can email, especially if it's an indie designer, and they will, they can look at their records and send you a copy. Like, I've done that before because I, my computer crashed, and I lost a bunch of patterns with them that weren't saved on my little thing, which reminds me I need to do that. But anyway, I knew how the shirt went together, but so that didn't work. So then I thought I was gonna take some of this hem tape, I had just enough, and I was gonna crisscross it in the front and let it show. It looked really cool until I messed up the B portion. I messed it up to the point, I couldn't get the stitches out, y'all. I was so in black thread on black fabric. It's just about as much fun as working with black yarn. <laughs> you know, you can't see what you're doing. So I had to cut the whole thing out because it was all messed up and I couldn't get the stitches out and it, kept, it started tearing the fabric. So anyway, I put it in timeout because <laughs> other than that, the shirt, uh, I have the hems done. I left a little split hem uh, to avoid tightness in the booty. And uh, it fits good. I just need to, this part, I, I just need to tuck it. I always surge, I like to surge and then use that as a folding point and then tuck it under. This doesn't hold an iron very well, hold an iron press. Well, this part did. I pleated the shoulder seam because I was being lazy. <laughs> I didn't want to do the set in. <laughs> the set in, so I pleated it. <laughs> I did that on that sh shirt too. I was being lazy, but uh, it works in a pinch if you want it to. So, otherwise, this top uh, is going to be a good one for work. Um, I just I hem the sleeves, figure out what to do in that V because once I since I cut it out it, and I fold it under to finish it, it's going to be bigger and it, that's going to be more than I want going on right there. So I'm going to I don't know. What that, those two shirts frustrated me, okay? My two shirts turned out great. Finished my sweater, it was awesome. So I did have some wins, okay? We know I said that, all right? Now, this shirt, I cannot find the pattern. I know what the pattern is, but I at least need to see the picture to know what's going on with these pieces, how it goes together, right? I don't know what the heck happened to the pattern, and now, I'm irritated because I really like this fabric. I I cleaned the past two weeks, test two weeks, past last week. I, like I spent several days cleaning in here, and then vacuumed and reorganized some stuff because it was chaos. Um, I don't know what happened to that pattern. I think it fell behind something. So I couldn't do anything with this, but I did. Fairly well, I feel, with my goals, my whips for my sewing whip for the for the clothing. Now my quilt top. Hold on. Let me get this back in here and move along. Why is there a crochet hook here? That came out of something that I was working on and now. Okay. So I did not complete.
completely finished my quilt top, but I'm very close. I did get all my blocks done for it. Um, I have this stack right here, which is eight blocks for another border, and then the blue strips for the last border. So I will show you what I got. You're not gonna be able to see it all because it's big. Um, I think I got the 72 by 72 inch one, or maybe bigger. But this is what I have so far. Um, yeah, you can see. I'm just gonna let it sit in front of my face. Yeah, I like it. So you make all these blocks and they kind of fit together in a puzzle. You don't know what the pattern is in the end. So this is the pattern. That's the center part and it kind of goes out from there. And then you start putting these border pieces on, which you got this border. That put on. And I got one more set of border pieces to put on, which are pieced, piece borders. And then the final border is just this. So, I don't have much to go to finish this. So, I'm very excited about that. And then I'll have a finished quilt top. I will not be quilting this right now. I don't have time to do that. <laughs> I have a t-shirt quilt in there I gotta work on. Um, but this will be done and I'm super excited about that. Um, now, sorry, I gotta fold this back up. Ooh, ooh. That's a workout. Yeah, that's a workout. All right, so that's what I got left to do to finish that quilt top. And I'll go ahead and, this is for the binding, so I'll go ahead and make that up. So it'll be ready. I've got to pick out some fabric for the backing. You could have bought, they had a special um, backing fabric to match whatever quilt colors you picked, but I opted not to do that. I didn't really like the choices they had for mine, so I'll pick out something when I get ready to make it. So it's not really in any hurry for that, are we? Now, um, I gotta reach down here and grab something right quick, okay? So these are my whips of the week for my sewing, which are super small things because I got a lot of bag sewing to do for my shop update. So, nothing quite like the quilt top. I want to get Velcro on these. These are seat belt covers. Um, so, I want to put Velcro on that. And then I have this pile of, these are minkies. I had cut out four seat belt covers, but this is really, it's so stretchy. It just, it's horrible to work with when you're doing that. So, I have so many of them cut out. And then I have a few of the polka dot ones left. Which I may turn into, I don't know. Well, I'm going to make up a little blanket top. And put some fleece on one side for my dog. That's what I'm going to do. So, that's pretty simple. <laughs> um, then I can use a knit foot with that. And not have to worry about so much about it stretching. Um, so then I also would like to finish this, which this is already quilted, the front and the back. I really just have to sew the seams and stuff him, which I'm thinking I'm going to stuff him with a bunch of fabric, fabric scraps in the bottom. I have bags of them up there, like the little bitty stuff, which will make, give it a nice weight. It's supposed to be a doorstop. And then, um, do polyfill for the rest. So that, that's not anything too hard to do. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna put those on the table, so I'm just gonna put those back. So that, those are my small little sort of things. This will get some stuff that's been in a pile forever out of my way, okay? I'm gonna put it back over there in my pile. Now, is there anything else? Oh, I was gonna show you some, some bags I have worked on already. It's nothing that's like complete, complete, but you can get an idea. I did show some things on Instagram a little bit the other night. So I had this, uh, I don't think I showed this when I showed fabrics that I'm using for this update. This update's called Country Living. But I had this, it's by Minky Kim. It was a layer cake and I had a jelly roll. 
which I had used some of for something else already, but I don't remember the name of the fabric line. But anyway, so I've got these cute, these are going to be mini maker bags. They got little chickens on them. Fits in with the theme. This is a floral print on the inside. I love it when I can get a layer cake at a price because it's already cut. I just have to cut the corners and sew. So that's one. And then I have it in, I have the white and I have the dark blue. That's my dog scratching over there. He's shaking everything. And I have the light blue and those prints. And then I have this cute bicycle print, which has another florally print on the inside. I have it in white. I'll have it in pink. And I'll have it in light blue. Then I have these cute, it's like a patchwork print. I have it in the tan. It has another floral kind of print on the inside. I have it in the pink and I'll have it in the blues okay so those are gonna be a mini maker bag sets that'll go in there um, now with the two inch strips which have the same prints what I decided to do because I uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> a jelly roll is two and a half inch strips of fabric that are the width of the fabric so they're about 44 inches they do leave the selvage on there so i said these together all right so this is the blues and then i'll have them in different colorways and i originally was going to make a bunch of smaller totes but i thought i'm going to make some of my bigger totes and i'm going to pair it with i think this particular colorway i'm going to pair it with this have some of this left this blue ticking which i think will be awesome very country vibe there um and then some of the other colorways will get this um gingham this grayish kind of gingham that i have that's a canvas so yeah thought those would be really cute so um and i'll be putting some of that We'll see what kind of fabrics I got over there. I got some utility fabrics. I was going to try to put in it so you could use it more like a market tote if you wanted to. Uh, it'll be easier to clean. It's not all waterproof. But it's like nylon and stuff. So, yeah. Be super cute on the outside and durable and useful on the inside. So, that's what I have done so far. I will be cutting out more things this evening. Oh, and I also have... I forgot I had these. Um, these are going to be totes. I'm going to have two. Yeah, it has the same thing on each side. Yeah. Hold on just a second. Like, as soon as I turn the film off to go over there and make him go lay down, he stops doing it. And he's headed to his bed anyway. Anyway... These will be totes, smaller totes. I had these cut out and I forgot about them. This will be super cute. I did some drawstring bags with the bigger ones of these. So I, they had little prints on each one, so I sewed them. They were, you know, some were long and some were square, so I sewed them like that. And it has this darker denim on the bottom. So yeah, there'll be totes. I'll have two of those. Um, I found those in my bag, my box of stuff. Where I've been, I've got like all sorts of random bags in different stages in there, and I was like, I really need to sew these up. <laughs> so anyway, sometimes it's little pieces that get left over because I didn't get finished for the shop update, or I didn't cut enough linings, and I had one outer portion or one inner portion and didn't have another you know it's just random stuff like that in there so that's stuff to look forward to in the shop update plus those prints i showed y'all before why is the lighting i feel like it's i'm glowing all of a sudden i don't know what's happening it's weird oh i just looked directly at the light that's never a good idea
Okay, it's time for DIY and thrifty fun. I don't really have anything to show you, although I feel like my earrings were kind of a DIY thing too. Um, I finished all that jewelry last week, but I did my video for the jewelry kit review, so I'll try to remember to put a little eye link up here for that. Um, I did not get to work on my painting at all, which kind of stinks. I was hoping to get to do that. I don't know if I get to work on it this week or not, and I really probably shouldn't put a, a whip of the week for DIY. I have something I kind of want to finish, but I don't want to put it out there, so I'm not going to say that I'm going to get it done. Why am I so out of breath? <sighs> probably because I picked up this big old box. Now, and um, I had said in my podcast I would show little sneak peeks of things that are going to be in the Maker Advent Calendar as we go along. But I just did the video for that, for the Maker Advent Calendar. So, um, I feel I showed a couple things in there already. So, I won't do one this week. But, the next podcast I will. Because a lot of things that have come in... Oh, I do have one thing I can show y'all. Hold on just a second. Okay, I finally got my Arteza sketchbooks in. So, I can't, got a two-pack of these. They have 200 sheets in them. Um, they do have the perforated... Um, I really like this because it has the fold-back spiral edges. And it's a nice textured, heavier weight... Uh, it's not like cardstock, but it's heavier than regular printer paper. And it does have the perforated edges. Um, there's your sketchbooks that um, I needed a new one. And this two-pack was, I don't remember how much it was, but we will, um, if I can find the price, I'll put it down below. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. That's a new thing I got in DIY because so if, if anything for whip of the week in DIY I would work on some sketching because I, n I never did finish the thing I had started for Easter which was back in April and get it up on the blog if you are new to the channel on the blog if you sign up for my newsletter you get a password to a page with uh, downloadable coloring sheets like for adults and uh I was putting up one a month when I started that, and I haven't in over a year. Yeah. But I had started one for Easter, and I was going to do the month of April, and I never got it finished. So maybe I can finish that this week and get something else done for a sketch. So, all right. So, what is this big box over here? So, I talked about that I did some cleaning this week, and I had a couple of boxes in there with random stuff in it for giveaways because I was going to do the Happy Mail thing, right? I started that when I had a thousand this year. I said instead of doing a big giveaway, I was going to do Happy Mail and um, you could send me an email with your address and I would pick someone on a regular basis. Well, then crazy things started happening. I feel like I've been mailing things a lot because I've been mailing out orders and mailing out clubs. So, um, I did pick three winners at one point, and I had picked three more, but I hadn't done anything with it. I hadn't announced it or anything. I don't announce the winners here. I will send you an email if you win. Um, so that is still a thing, but I had some stuff in there that was just kind of random stuff that I decided to fill up a bunch of bags <laughs> with different things. That's what this is. I filled up a bunch of bags with just random stuff, like crafty stuff and yarny stuff. So I'm going to pick a bag every week. This is my D stash. It's not a giveaway. Well, I guess it is, but it's not like usually when you see a giveaway on um, YouTube, you do say something in the comments and they'll do a random comment picker. I don't like doing that. Half the time, people don't answer me back. And I just feel like. It doesn't work so just like with my happy mail if you want to be entered to win 
whatever bag I pick out of here this week, then you need to email me and say so, okay? Uh, you don't have to email me your address. Just email me and say, I would like some happy mail or something like that. You know, uh, no, retract that statement. <laughs> you can email me and say, I want in on the D-Stash giveaway this week. How about that? Yeah, because I do plan on still doing the happy mails. Um, so if you want, it would have to be two different emails or you can send it in the same email, I guess. You can email me for this week and say, I want in on the D-Stash bag. And then if you want the happy, and on the happy mail drawing, you would say, go ahead and give me your address. Because if you don't send me your address and tell me what you like to do as far as crafty things, like, um, do you like to crochet? What kind of threads you like to lose? Are you knit? Do you do papers things? Do you do jewelry things? Do you do, you know, I do all those things. So I need to know what kind of things you like to make. So I have a better idea of what to put in your happy mail if you are chosen. So the way that one works, you send me your email with your address. You tell me what kind of crafty things you like to do. And then at least once a month, I'm going to try to get back to doing at least once a month. I don't know if I'll have one this month. Probably be June before it starts back up. Uh, I will pick, sometimes I pick three at a time. Sometimes I just pick one. I will pick one and I'll stuff a bag full of fun things and I'll mail it to you. And I'll send you an email and tell you it was it's on the way. I don't announce the winner here. Uh, not everybody wants her name out, um, but I do let you know, and you have some fun happy mail. Um, and then, so then for for the D stash bag of the week, I'm gonna do these till these are gone. Okay, I'm gonna pick one. I'll show you what's in it. I don't like mystery things can be fun, but they can be not fun too, right? So you'll know what's in it. And you say, hey. Uh, when you send me an email, you don't have to send your address for that one. You can just say, I like the D-Stash bag this week or something like that, you know. Um, and then if you're picked, I'll email you for your address, right? I feel like that way I already have your email. I already have a point of contact with you because even if I comment on somebody's comment, they don't answer me sometimes in those giveaways I've done before. So, this way, I know you're committed if you send me an email for the most part okay and i don't have to do the random comment picker thing so well i will i'll put everybody's name in a random picker and do it that way that i get an email from i hope it's not becoming confusing i feel like i'm making this confusing so let's try this again for the d-stash bag that i'm about to show you Send me an email, say, I like the D-Stash bag this week. Whatever, like that, okay? Also, happy mail. If you'd like to receive some happy mail from me, we would put into, I draw somebody from the names I have with what I do. Um, but if you'd like to be put into that drawing, you need to email me your address and tell me what kind of crafts you like to do, okay? Because if you don't tell me what you're talking kind of crafts you do I'm not gonna pick your name out because I don't have time to email everybody back I would love to I email people when I can I get lots of email and messages so just so you know that <laughs> and I'm really behind on comments and all that we're not gonna get into that anyway so those are the two things going on okay um, I'll probably send out a happy mail next I am gonna send out a happy mail next month I don't think I'll get one out this month. Um, so, and that will be all stuff from my stash. All that stuff comes from my stash. This is just random D stash stuff that's like, I had one skein of this, one skein of that. I had these random uh, notions and these random just, just things that I was trying to get out of my way. Okay. Um, yeah. So I'll put down the rules down below. This is open to everybody international. Just know that if you get it shipped to you international, internationally, that if there's something I can't ship to your country for whatever reason, I will not be able to do that. And you are responsible for any tariffs or fees 
that happen when it gets to its destination. It also have to be 18 years or older to send me an email, okay? Um, I don't know how you would know that, but that is a rule. I will have that down below on my little rule. All the, you know, legal stuff you got to put down there. I'll have that down below. And if you, and maybe better explanation than I'm doing right now. I feel like I'm rambling. Let's just get on with it, shall we? Let me take some water. Let me take some water. Take some water. Let me drink some water. All right. I'm just going to grab this first bag that's sitting on top. Let's see what's inside this bag. This is a very random bag that I've picked for the first one. Okay, so let's see. Mm -hmm. This has some Lash Lux, a three pack of Lash Lux from Premier Eyelash Yarn. That can be fun to use. You know, I have some over there. I do like to use it for different things. It also has this random skein of Easter egg colored yarn. I picked up at the Crafty Estate sale. I thought I would use it, but I don't think I will now. So it's just, I don't know what kind it is. I'm fairly certain it's an acrylic. And I think it might be some kind of red heart or Karen Simply Soft. It might be Karen Simply Soft because it's kind of thin like that is. So this is in there. And... <laughs> Aunt Lydia's Crochet Classic number 10 yarn in red. Vic Victory Red is the name of it. That is red. So this is a brand new skein. This has never been used. Um, has the label and all that stuff. Um, yeah. So that's what's in that bag. I told you this is random stuff. So this is a random bag. <laughs> These are red. This is Easter. Maybe it could work together. I don't know. But anyway, if you're interested in this D sash bag, send me an email and I will pick a winner before next week's podcast and I will send out your random D stash bag. Now, you should also know that I will most likely put in some tea and a stitch marker in these bags like I usually do. So, um, there's my first, that's like the most random bag in that box. <laughs> I remember doing these bags. This is the very most random one. So, if you think you'd like the D-Stash bag, send me an email. Um, and I will pick a winner before next week, okay? I'm going to do one of these a week until they're gone. And I will start back doing Happy Mail by next month. So, if you want me in on that, email me, okay? I'm not picking from the comments. You can comment about it. That's fine too, but I'm not picking from the comments. Just know that, okay? Alright, so that is our random D-Stash bag of the week. Um, it can only get better from there, from that bag. I don't think it's terrible. Some people like that crochet thread. I actually like that Easter egg yarn. I just didn't know what I would do with it. So, all right, y'all. This is getting out of control, and I have more videos to do today. My voice is already tired, so I really need to let y'all go. Although, I did want to talk about my earrings. These are those earrings I got from that Etsy shop that have pressed flower it's in the acrylic. You're never going to see that right here, but I'm wearing earrings. You can't tell because my hair's covering it up. There. Okay. So, y'all remember to have a life lived creatively, and I will see y'all next time. Bye-bye.